Hello. Today's math is going to be on 2.3 envisions for fifth grade. And this is how to add and subtract using a hundredth grid. So I will show you kind of the general notes that we took in class today. It's mostly hands on that you need to do. So I just said in general, when adding, you just add the squares from the hundredth grid. When subtracting, you're going to put an X over it. Um, the big, one of the biggest thing is all decimals need to be to the hundredth place. And I'll explain what that means. And so I said, add zeros if needed, color in the first number, and then either add squares or X out squares, depending on if you are adding or subtracting. So the first one that I will have us do, and I did give the students hundredth grid papers. So like, let's say 41 hundredths plus three are three tenths. So I did tell the students it has to have two decimals after the zero or after the decimal. You have to have two places after the decimal. Why? Because that puts it in the hundredth spot. So this is your ones and then you have your tenths and your hundredths, your tenths and your hundredths. So you need to make it into the hundredths because um, I always like to think of money. If someone said, you know, they have $21 and then 0.5, even if they forgot the zero, that still means $21.50. Um, so I just always tell the students, hey, make sure you always have two places after the decimal. That's the first thing. If they do that, they're doing good. So now because I am adding, I'm going to zoom in quite a lot. So my first number is 41. So I am going to shade in 41 squares. And I told the students, don't worry about it being perfect but make sure that you can tell. Most of the students know how to do this. It's just very tedious. And it's like, if you, you know, miscount one little box, it can mess you up. So don't worry, tomorrow's homework is, uh, tomorrow's work is gonna be so much easier because we're gonna learn the standard algorithm way, but the state of Indiana does want us to learn the visual way. So here I shaded in 41, each of these is worth 10. So I have 40 and then one. Now my other number is 30. So now I need to shade in 30. And the best way to do this is to, I would, um, so here's nine. So that's now 19, 29, and then 30. I do encourage the students to, I, I hope that you can see that on the video. Um, I do encourage the students to overlap here. So now you have nine, and 10, so now you have 19, plus 10, so that's 29, and then 30. So that way now I can easily see, I can easily add up how many I have. So I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and one. So my answer for this problem is 71 hundredths. So that's pretty easy when it's just two smaller numbers like that. What makes it trickier is if you do have a whole number. So if you had one, one and 23 hundredths plus, I'm just gonna say 12, I'll make it easy for myself. What this represents, I'm gonna fold this, I'm gonna turn this paper around just so I don't get anybody confused watching at home. What that one represents is once again, I like to think money. This means you have one full dollar or you have a hundred pennies, which means you need to shade in one full grid. So I'm going to shade in one full grid. And it doesn't have to be pretty. You just have to make sure that you remember what you shaded in. I'm sure some of the students, you know, spend a little bit more time. Okay, so there's one for my 100 and then 23. So here's 10, here is 20, and then three. So I want you to see that I shaded in one hole and then 23, okay? Now I need to add my 12. So one, two, three, four, five, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I shaded in 12, 12 yellows right there. So now I can see my answer. I have one full um, hundredth grid. So that would be my one. And then let's see, I have 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So my answer for that one is one and 35 hundredths. That's because I still have one full one shaded and then I have 35 hundredths. I'll show you one more addition one, then we'll jump on over to subtraction. Most of the students um, are okay with doing this. It's just tedious and it takes a while and they get tired and they don't want to do it and I completely understand. Okay. I want to remind you, you have to have two places after the decimal. So here I'm going to add my zero. So this is really the number 10. But now as you see, this is 196. So that means I need to shade in a whole um, hundredth grid. And then 96. It is easier with a highlighter. In class, we use pencil and pen. Um, highlighter is a little bit easier just because you can color in more quickly. So there is my one and 96 hundredths, or I like to think of it as this is one whole dollar and this is 96 cents. But now I need to add my 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, now look, now you have two full boxes and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and six squares. A lot of the students are going to want to put 2.6, but that represents 60. You don't have 60, you only have six. I like to think of money, you guys, $2 and six cents. I like to think of money. Okay. Let's jump on over to subtraction because subtraction is usually a tad bit harder. Not too bad though. Um, so we'll start off easy. 45 minus 12. Okay. Once again, shade in your first number. So I have 45. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so there is my 45. I'll zoom in so you can see. There is my 45. Now, if you remember, my problem is 45 hundredths minus 12 hundredths. I have two numbers after the decimal, so I'm good. Okay, now I need to take away 12. So how the book taught them is you're going to X out 12. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, now let's count how many boxes are left. So I'm, I, these are gone, think of those as totally gone. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, so that means my answer is 33 hundredths. When it's small like this, it's usually not a problem for the kids. It's usually just honestly when the numbers get larger. And it's not because they don't know how to do it. It's because they get like a little bit confused, um, you know, like with crossing out, like they're like, oh man, did I shade that in? So it might help if you have a highlighter at home. It might help to allow them to use a highlighter. Um, in the future, I will have them use highlighters in class as well because I do think it's just easier to kind of see what you're crossing out. So let's do, um, I will do two more and I'll make them a little bit harder so that way we can see kind of the difference. So I'm going to do one point, or one and five hundredths minus three. Now remember, this is three tenths. I need to have two numbers after my decimal place because I'm working with hundredths. So that's really the same thing as 30 hundredths. All right. So I'm going to zoom this.
listen. So I have one hole. So I'm going to shade in this. I have one hole. One hole and then five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's not too bad. One hole and five. Now take off 30. So I'm going to take off this whole row, this whole row, and this whole row. These rows are no longer there. Now with this one, I can easily see what's left. Here's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. So I do think the highlighter does help. Um, so my answer for this one is 75 hundredths. Um, and I will do one more that's maybe even a little bit trickier. Let's see, two um, and 98 hundredths minus, I'll do, I'll say 74. So kind of just random numbers there, nothing in particular about them. So with this, I need to shade in two whole ones. And then 98, so that's all of them but two. And like I told the class, you know, don't spend too much time shading, but you do want to be able to tell what you shaded in. So that's why I do think the highlighters actually are a little bit better. In class, we were using pencils and um, a blue pen, and I just think that the highlighter is a little bit better. Okay, so, oh, okay, so this, oh, wait, no, I'm totally wrong, you guys. This is a common mistake. I wanted you to see this. Uh-oh. I only shaded one hole in 98. I saw a lot of kids accidentally doing that. You have to remember it's two holes and then 98. That is probably the biggest mistake that I see. Um, so I wanted you to see that a lot of times you get going and you're like, wait a second, um, because there are so many to shade in. Typically, the problems that we see are just simple mistakes like that. When I had the students working with me, it was little itty bitty mistakes like that. So we have two 98, so I have two holes or $2 and a 98 cents, and I am taking away 7,400. So let's take away 74. So I'm just gonna do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and then one, two, three, four. What I'm going to do is I'm going to count all of my hundred, I'm gonna count all of my 10 rows first. Okay, so this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So right now I'm at 100. And then I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and I still have another hundred. So before I had a hundred, so I kind of thought of that as one dollar. Now I have another hundred. Well, one plus one is two. So now I'm at two, but then I still have another row. So here's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. This is when it actually gets a little bit harder because you have to do a lot of problem solving. So I found out that I actually had 200 still shaded, which counted for my two. And then I had to count, okay, here's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Don't forget these, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. The biggest mistakes I saw were like the one that I showed you where you accidentally only did like maybe one in 98 hundredths and it was supposed to be two in 98 hundredths. A lot of times kids will count these and they'll forget about these little guys over here. Usually it's very small mistakes like that. Um, that kind of make a big difference in the problem. So we will continue working on this, but hopefully that gave you an idea of how to do it. If you're adding, you're just bringing the two colors together and you're counting how many squares have color on them. If you're subtracting, don't forget to shade them in correctly and then knock off whatever you're supposed to subtract. So I hope that that helped you with the homework tonight.